Hi and good morning once again. Lovely weather here in Bangalore, wherever else. If you are in some other place, then please feel envious of us because we live in a city which is air conditioned at least 10 months of the year. year. Yet we find relationships going bad everywhere. Good weather, bad weather. We have, you know, what are known as fair weather friends. People who are very nice to us when everything is going fine. And the moment something goes wrong, they uh, become your worst enemies. Or worse than that, they do some backstabbing. And those are the type of things which we need to look into. Okay. Very quickly, I will run you through again the basics of relationship. I know I've repeated this number of times, but I think we all need a little bit of a refresher now and then or to understand relationships. Relationships, by their very definition, have to be two way. Okay. If you are doing some charitable act to somebody, you are just helping out somebody, or you're, you know, being nice to somebody uh, without expectations, that's not a relationship. That's a good deed that you are doing. It's a social service. When you have a, a two way relationship, when you have some expectations, then it becomes a relationship. OK, now every relationship is dynamic. It keeps changing. We sometimes make the mistake of thinking that, oh, I have established such a good bond with this, this, this person. I've understood this person so well that now it will go smoothly. It is not true. Relationships have to be nurtured. All relationships have to be nurtured from time to time, reviewed, seen how things keep uh, have changed. You know, introspect whether anything is going wrong with the relationship, whether there are any hiccups in that. Then and then only we can assume that the relationship can be uh, going fine. Similarly, some relationships at some point become one way. That is. One person keeps giving, giving, giving in the relationship and the other person is receiving, receiving. Those again, you know, if you choose to give. But as I told you, the moment you choose to make it one sided and just keep giving, please understand that it is not a relationship. It is an act of charity that you are doing. It may be emotional charity, but that's what you are uh, doing. At the same uh, uh, time, we have to understand that we all have expectations from our relationships. As I said, it is a give and take. So there is obviously expectation. If there is no expectation, then again, I come back to the same point. It is not a relationship. However angry you get with me and however much you may oppose me, I would still like to remind you that there is no such thing as unconditional love. Maybe the only unconditional love you can have is for God or in an extreme, some guru or somebody who's like a representative of God. But again, that's not a relationship. A relationship and that too with a human being is when there is give and take. So you obviously have expectations. Now what happens is some expectations actually make you feel happy. That's very interesting. You will see that uh, maybe a girl has just fallen in love with this uh, uh, guy and he is, you know, so possessive. He is taking care of anything and everything. He decides what we should, uh, she should wear, where should she go, whom should she talk to. Normally, you would be angry with such a person. No, who is he is coming to my life and he's trying to dictate to me. But you know something, if she has been craving for somebody to take care of her life, if she has been deprived of love and been wanting more and more love, she feels so thrilled that this person is loves me so much that anything and everything, he wants to be part of my uh, life. He wants to control my life. He wants to get the best for me. He goes out of the way to do uh, um, things. And that is when, please remember, you are surrendering your choice. You are giving in to that person. And now that person says that since I'm doing so much for you, I'm going out of the way to do nice things, to take care of you, to spend so much time with you. Therefore, I have some proprietary rights. 
I can dictate to you whom you should talk to, what food you should eat, whom you should meet, what dress you should wear, anything and everything the person can start uh, you know, uh, dictating. Let us for a minute review. Why do we allow people to do that? If starting with the fact that I have not had love from other people and I think I'm getting love from this person, that is when I start doing this thing that I have had nobody really loving me so far. So when this person is giving me love, I'm willing to go all out. But that is like, you know, I keep uh, um, saying that relationship is like a sapling which you have planted and it is growing and it is blossoming. It is going higher. It starts giving you leaves, shade, fruits, flowers, whatever it is. But at every point, you need to protect that uh, plant. No, Anytime anything can happen to the plant, if you don't protect it, the same thing happens with the relationships. Now, if I feel that this particular plant is the only one that I have in uh, my life. Without this, I have nobody else. Nobody will love me. Nobody will care for me. If that sort of feeling comes in. If I feel that there is a tremendous vacuum and nobody loves me, then I allow this person to take advantage of me. So that is the first thing. The other, which is directly connected to this, is low self-esteem. If I feel I'm not worthy of love, I have nobody who will appreciate me or admire me. Why? Because I don't have any great qualities. I'm not good looking. I'm not educated. I'm not a great conversationalist. I'm not a rich person. I, I have nothing to offer. So since I'm not worthy, the very fact that this person is still considering having a relationship uh, with me, I feel so thrilled about it. But it doesn't work that way. I keep reminding people that relationship has to be two way. Dependency also comes in or you allow the person to take advantage of you when you somewhere start feeling insecure because of certain things. I feel that I am a little insecure. I'm scared. Let's say I've had a bad experience. So now I start thinking. Anybody can attack me, anybody can take advantage of me, anybody can hurt me. So that is when I start thinking that it is good for me to have this person around. It is like when I'm feeling insecure in my place, I appoint a security officer at the gate and I say, ha, now that I have a security person outside, everything is fine, I am protected. But it's very important what sort of a security personnel you a point, right? If you appoint the wrong person, he can be your worst enemy. He can, you know, steal from you much easier than anybody else. That is what sometimes we do in uh, relationships. Some of us even go to the extreme end when our self worth goes down to say, yes, X is taking advantage of me or Y is harassing uh, uh, me and is oppressing me, putting me down, but that's what I deserve. We actually go into a frame of mind where we want to punish ourselves. So when somebody else is punishing me, I say, yeah, yeah, see, I deserve it. No, that's why it is happening. We actually invite such a person or persons to come and hurt us. In Hindi, there is a proverb which says, A bel mujhe mar. You are attracting the bull and saying, come and hit me. The bull is busy in his own work or grazing, but you are going and attracting the bull and saying, come and hit me, hurt me. This is what we do sometimes. We don't realize all these uh, things, but many of us actually do it. And that's the reason why I'm here today to talk to you about what I would um, uh, say as a toxic relationship okay normally i don't like to give labels to either relationships or people but definitely you cannot avoid putting a label because what happens is that when it crosses that boundary a relationship crosses that boundary of well-being or if 
the, uh, you know, being beneficial to you or giving you something in return, it actually becomes toxic. Toxic is what? It becomes poisonous. How and what happens? I'll explain to you in a minute or uh, uh, two. I also wanted to tell you at this point that some of us continue with such bad relationships or such hurtful relationships because we have a defined relationship where we think we have to do something. It is like, you know, I am a mother, so it is my duty to take care of my child. Even if my child is being nasty, even if my child is hurting me in so many ways, even if my child is ignoring, I will still say no. As a mother, it is my duty to help my child, to take care of my child. Same thing happens in any relationship. As a son, it is my duty to take care of my father, however bad he is to me. These are the type of things which turn relationships into something which is very, very bad. How does this happen and what does it lead to is what I'm going to discuss uh, uh, with you uh, today. And finally, of course, how we can prevent it. At this point also, let me tell you that uh, maybe a very small percentage of people whom we could define as evil people who go out of the way to hurt people, put them down, make life miserable for uh, uh, them. Those are people who are beyond any redemption. Whoever they encounter, wherever they encounter, whatever they do, they are going to hurt. They are people who think that the whole world revolves around them and everything should be done to their satisfaction. If I am getting satisfaction out of it, I don't care what the other person is uh, uh, getting. Those are, as I told you, very small percentage of the population. I can safely tell you that 99% of the population of this world consists of either good or neutral people, not bad or evil people. Yet, relationships go bad with good people or with neutral people. This is something which is very, very important because like I told you, relationship is always two-way. Sputi has asked, do they have traits of narcissism? I'll come to that in a uh, little later to explain what happens if a person goes to this extreme, what we refer to as narcissistic and you know those uh, very, very extreme uh, things. But before that, let me explain to you how it leads up to uh, uh, that. One important thing is that if I can, whenever I'm in doubt about a relationship, I love this person. Or I have a defined equation. This person is my parent, my sibling, my child, my whoever uh, it is. So I have to maintain a relationship with this person. Either way, if I'm getting some uncomfortable feelings, if I'm feeling that, no, I'm not really happy, a simple thing like now I have to interact with this person and instead of feeling that joy, yeah, I'm going to interact with this person. Instead of that, there's a sort of little glitch in my heart. Oh, I have to meet him now. Or a little thing that I hope things will move on with uh, uh, that. Yes, Bemma has said something very nice. I'm living with one that is narcissistic person. It's not that I am the good person and the other person is a villain. I have my flaws. That's what I'm going to be coming to in a few minutes to explain what is our contribution to a relationship becoming uh, uh, toxic. One more reason why I give so much importance to, uh, you know, evaluating and doing something about a toxic relationship before it really, you know, tears us apart is because it affects our other relationships. Nobody in this world has a relationship with only one person. But sometimes we th seem to think so. I think that my life revolves around my spouse or my child or my best friend. And I ignore or neglect all the other people in my life, many of whom are really nice to me, who can make my life so joyous, who can enrich my quality of life. But because I am so focused on this so-called toxic relationship, I stop paying attention to the other people. 
I don't even seek out help from the other people. Very often I've come across A is being very badly suppressed by B. A is being ill-treated by B. But when somebody asks A, hey, I'm noticing that B is being very nasty to you. What's happening? A actually defends B. No, that is because that day he was in a bad mood. Or nowadays he is going through a stressful time. Otherwise, he's a very nice person. By doing that, we are actually encouraging that negative behavior, which may lead to this thing of uh, you know becoming uh, uh, a toxic uh, relationship. And any time when the relationship goes bad, people can tolerate, tolerate, tolerate up to a certain point, and then the whole thing can blow apart. We have to do preventive work before that happens. Of course, at this moment also, let me tell you that they have a few people who know how to manipulate the manipulator. I'll give you a you know, funny example. Here is this man who is being very oppressive to his wife. He beats her up, he's callous to her, he gets drunk, whatever uh, the negative qualities. And he's continuously ill-treating uh, her. So let's say he gets drunk and he beats her up and the next morning he's feeling a little guilty about what he did. You know what the wife does? She says, festival is coming, I need a new sari. And at that moment he is feeling so guilty or vulnerable, he will say immediately come, I'll buy you an expensive. Sorry. So there are people who know how to manipulate the manipulator. That's entirely up to you if you want to do that. How long it will last, how healthy that relationship will be in the long run, that you have to uh, see. I have no comment to make on that. But my address now is to those people who are not manipulators, who cannot play games or tricks. They want to be straightforward, honest, and they want to have a good, healthy relationship with all their near and dear, including the so-called person who is causing so much of stress and so much of negativity in my uh, life. Let me quickly define why I'm using this word toxic. I told you I don't like to use definitions in relationships, emotions and all, but I will tell you why. Because when do I say that a relationship has become toxic? When? Anything that I do to improve the relationship actually makes it worse. Think it over. Keep a note of this. If you find that your relationship with somebody has come to a point where you try to do a good gesture and there is a you know, negative impact. The other day a counselee was telling me that my husband who's very nasty to me. One thing is that he loves homemade food. So however busy I am, however early in the morning he has to go, I make sure that I pack homemade food, I cook fresh food in the morning and I pack it and give it to him. Now this is her way of trying to improve the relationship, uh, right? So she is packing this food and saying two minutes before you leave, I'm putting this, I'm putting the rice and sabdi and all that. And he comes and peers into the tiffin box and says, why are you packing so much rice? You want me to get fat? You know that I've got cholesterol problems and all that. And yet you are dumping so much rice on me. That's how you want to hate me, is it? That's how you, how you want to take out your anger on me, is it? You imagine this poor thing is getting up early in the morning and cooking food of her, his choice and giving. And even there he finds a fault. Okay, even if he felt that too much rice may increase his cholesterol, all he has to do is just cut down on the rice. Okay, don't put so much. That's it. But instead of appreciating the um, uh, gesture of his spouse, he actually uses even that to put the person uh, down. Left, right and center, I see these sort of things happening and they create more and more guilt in the nice person. And the nice person starts going more and more out of the way to do things, hoping 
that you know at least if i do this things will improve maybe if i try that he will appreciate it and at every point the other person is looking for excuses to put this person down it is so sad but it is an actual fact that there are relationships where the more you contribute the more good gestures you make the more you try to help the other person the worse it becomes and that is why i am using the word toxic it is like i am eating food which has got some poisonous stuff in it i am feeling weak i am feeling extremely hungry i need food to fight my battles and to get all right right but if i can keep or if i do keep eating more and more of the poisonous food instead of giving me energy it is actually making me sicker it is okay to remain hungry and avoid the food when i know that there is some poisonous stuff in it that is how it happens in relationships okay so let us first start with identifying the parameters or the factors which give us a very clear indicator that yes this relationship seems to be turning toxic or it has already turned toxic you can see some beautiful and very imaginative slides that sunita has made every week she has been doing this very diligently that the moment i give her a few points you know she converts them into this beautiful uh, slides which i'm sure are more attractive to look at than my face so here you are indicators that a relationship has turned toxic number 1 you have been let down repeatedly certain very basic uh, you know expectations or even certain commitments which the person has made to you and the person lets you down okay once twice three times it has become a pattern in your relationship with the uh, person then you discover an unacceptable bad quality of the person hey i didn't know i had a close relationship with this person since a long time but i didn't realize that this person is also indulging in this 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 a very negative a very bad a very horrifying unacceptable bad quality when you discover that that this was hidden from me that means there's something very bad with my relationship with that uh, person if you feel cheated ridiculed or otherwise ill treated ridiculed in front of third person this is a very common thing which people who want to make a relationship toxic or who want to gain control my so and so she doesn't know what she is doing she thinks she is great she can never do things uh, uh, right cheating the person ridiculing the person ill treating the person next you find that the other person is suddenly cooling off basic small small uh, gestures small small things we used to do something together we used to do you know make some small gestures and the person is just ignoring uh, uh, you again on a continuous uh, basis i have some questions which i will answer after i complete uh, this the other person starts making accusations there's an acronym which says i i f y m if it weren't for you anything and everything it is you the funniest of those is when a person says why do you make me hit you why do you make me lose my temper see you are losing your temper you are hitting the person and even that you are accusing the other person why do you make me hit you you understand the, how irrational some accusations can be then strong negative influence from third person this person has gone into so much being you know totally under the control of some third person and anything and everything that he or she says this person is going to follow you can beat your head trying to rationalize or trying to give a counter view so no x said this so i am going to only abide by what x says the person stops thinking for himself then then you find that you are threatened to make either or choice you want to have a relationship with me you better do this this is okay 
you want something from me you better answer to uh, this i am telling you whatever uh, uh, you know happens there's no third way okay you it's either my way or the highway you have to make either or choice uh, next you feel it is better for the other person to move on however close that relationship has been however nice uh, you have certain good memories and all that when you start coming to a point where you say i think it is better that the other person moves on but let him at least be happy if i can't be happy maybe without me the person will have a better quality of life i have given up i don't think i can do anything more than uh, uh, that and when you feel you cannot tolerate it anymore i have come to the end of my tether i am not in a position to handle this anymore and the last point anything you do only leads to the other person getting more upset vindictive or angry uh, both start attributing hidden intentions of vested interest i know why you said that i know why you are keeping quiet and not replying i know who is influencing uh, you i don't care whatever you are saying i don't think you have the right intentions these are some of the very very critical and important factors which should raise up your antenna and tell you that no something is going uh, wrong the earlier you can start they say no the stitch in time is saves nine please do not wait for the relationship to become toxic today after this session if some thoughts have come uh, to you as lila has written you know you can't come out of it sometimes when it gets so deep and when you are caught in that so if you haven't come to that point as i said prevention is better than uh, cure some people do mellow down after some time i don't deny it i've had people coming and telling me that you know 30 years we have lived together this person has been horrible with me but now the person seems to be mellowing down i don't know how many of us have the patience to wait not for years but for uh, decades ask yourself whether you have talked it out number of times with the person assertively not claim uh, you know uh, accusing and blaming and all and also not breaking down crying and getting in, into the uh, uh, that victim uh, uh, mode also ensure that you have spoken in a calm and neutral environment you have given the person a chance to think you have rationalized certain things and said think this over and i would like to have answers from you at the same time yes nishana i agree with you when kids are involved the decision making gets tougher for most uh, women i i come to that uh, as we move uh, on to what you can do about it see if you know instead of getting into power struggles you can ask somebody to help you right now after that i'm just going to spend a few minutes giving you a few very simple bullet points into what you can do if you have already landed in a, a toxic relationship so this will be helpful to you if you are currently facing a toxic relationship it will give you some practical tips and points as to how you can work on that uh, it can also prepare you in advance if a relationship is going towards becoming uh, toxic and thirdly it will help you to help others whenever you come across somebody known to you or somebody whom you are counseling and that person is getting entrapped into what we call as a toxic relationship these points are going to help you to uh, move on exactly anushri is asking as a counselor how we can help to see that in the, that is what i am going to be giving you that will be my last uh, uh, point before we have the open house there are already some questions which i would like to answer and we will be looking forward to more questions but you must as usual allow me that two minutes to have half a cup of tea and i will be back here is sima with one or two very interesting you know uh, announcements for you or for people known to you 
So just have that and I'll be back. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome again uh, this Saturday. And uh, what an interesting topic and what a topic which I think many resonate with. And uh, either you're going through it or you know of people who are going through it. But you know what? Most of us, even during our counseling sessions, we come across people thinking that that's it. You know, this is mera nasib ye hai or something like that. You know, I have to live with it. No, absolutely not. You know, the whole idea is that if you think you are in a painful or toxic relationship, definitely you need to start working on it. And the best way I feel is to definitely, you know, take help from a professional counselor. You know, that really helps you to introspect and uh, think about a lot of aspects. And we have seen like repeatedly in so many cases that, you know, people feel much better venting out, uh, you know, uh, understanding where the relationship is going and uh, how uh, they can help, uh, you know, themselves. Uh, so there are many, many, uh, you know, uh, ways in which you can do that. And that is, of course, you can take the help of a counselor to identify. I think the most important part is self-awareness. And uh, then, of course, where your relation stands, how do you, you know, of course, we will be talking about how you can handle these relationships. But definitely as a counseling center here, you know, Banjara uh, provides a free counseling center. So why not use uh, one of the counselors to help you, uh, you know, to deal with this uh, sort of a relationship in your life, right? And I mean, the, the most uh, amazing uh, program, the flagship program that we have, Diploma in Counseling Skills, that is one program which really, really helps us to, uh, you know, all these points which uh, Ali has been talking about. We can really look at that. We can really uh, sit down, introspect, analyze and work on ourselves and, uh, you know, uh, look for uh, resolutions or uh, coping mechanisms and strategy. So please reach out. DCS is a fabulous program. We've all gone through it and uh, benefited immensely from it. So uh, we're just going to close uh, admissions very, very shortly. So please uh, reach out. Um, uh, I mean, DCS uh, will really, for many, many people who come and tell us that it has been a transformational journey for them. We are going to look at many of these uh, aspects, you know, starting from self-awareness, relationships, ego in a relationship, assertiveness, many personality traits, how to handle different types of uh, issues, including, you know, one very interesting feature about DCS is that we also have, other than our fabulous core team, we also have experts coming and, uh, you know, helping uh, understand the various, you know, for example, gender or sexuality or addiction, even those kind of things. All of that, uh, we have experts coming in and uh, taking us through that whole, uh, you know, they're sharing their experiences and helping us to deal with it. So many, many aspects uh, to it, uh, all about human behavior. And that is something which uh, our DCS program uh, has, uh, you know, uh, everything, all those things are part of uh, the program. So, uh, uh, yeah, I don't think you should miss out on this uh, opportunity. Uh, admissions will open again only next year. So a few more seats left and a few more days to go. Uh, already our teams have gotten started. We have four teams. But yeah, we do have a vacancy, a few vacancies in some of our teams. So do uh, reach out to us. Right. So back to Dr. Ali. Yes. As I had mentioned to you, please be aware of the possibility of indulging in, uh, you know, that, uh, what do you call uh, it, power struggles. If he is doing something, I want this. I would like to be one up on this person. I am not going to allow. Instead of uh, that, as I mentioned, first check whether you have spoken to the person number of times assertively without being aggressive and without being passive or putting yourself as a victim and in a calm and quiet environment and when you put up a point and say this is what hurts me this is what i'm upset it should always be a me statement and not a you statement 
you are abusive, you hurt me, you do this, your behavior is like that. Instead of that, I feel hurt when somebody uses bad language. I feel very pained if somebody raises their voice. I am getting the feeling that I am not getting certain things, which certain commitments which have been made are not being fulfilled. Please try that out as many number of times as your patience allows uh, you. When that does not happen, then you move on to the other part of the uh, thing about how we can start insulating ourselves. What I want to do other than my relationship with this uh, 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 person. Incidentally, Bambam has said, I'm not in Bangalore, how to get a counseling session. Then we do counseling on phone and through email. So we are of late, normally many people have been in touch with us whom we are counseling from any part of the country or even outside the uh, uh, country. So please feel free, get in touch with us. Either shoot off a mail or write, I mean, uh, uh, call us up. And we will have one dedicated person from among Banjara team who will help you through. Any of you who are listening or anybody whom you know uh, um, uh, also. Uh, what I was saying just now has been reflected by Noor Sabah who says, I have started ignoring. Now I am seeing a drastic change in my mental peace and overall uh, uh, growth. That's what I'm saying. It's not as difficult as we think. If I make up my mind and do it slowly, if you suddenly drastically try to cut off from the person or mentally insulate yourself, the other person is not going to um, take uh, the thing. Tina is asking, does ignoring mean accepting? No. It means I am going to move away from the way you are hurting me and the impact that is happening. I will still continue to try to see if there can be a change in your behavior. But since I seem to be hitting a wall where I'm not getting anything, this is what I will try. Roshan says, best way is to ignore and no matter what you do to improve your relationship, it gets old. That's exactly Roshan. That is what I, that's why I said that this is when it becomes a toxic relationship. That's why I'm giving that label to it. Whatever you do, it seems to be getting only uh, worse. So when I say ignoring, I am focusing that. I am going to build this emotional wall. And Noor has put it again in a very nice way, saying, ignoring means it's not worth my attention. I have tried you out. I have been nice. I have made efforts. I have reached out. Now I feel that you and the behavior of yours is not worth my attention. I've got better things to do in life. And I've got better people to do uh, um, things. Here, I want you to be very conscious of the manipulation, which I told you, no? that when the person says, why do you make me angry? Why do you make me hate you? Why do you provoke me uh, so much? Whenever an opportunity presents itself, at that time, he may be angry, he will not listen to you, so don't even try. But later on, if you can tell the person, you said this, this, this two days back when we were having an argument, please remember that as an adult, it is up to me to control my emotions. For my emotions, I can't, uh, you know, blame others. Ah, Ashwini Mukun, Ash, says men ego is very high. No comments, Ash. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I happen to be <laughs> part of that uh, tribe called uh, men. It is true to quite an extent if you take statistically. There are more men who have this ego problems or temper problems or the way they deal with temper. I won't say temper problems as such. Both men and women have the uh, temper um, problems. But what we need to do is not generalize. Whenever we put this label, men are like that, then what happens, you know? Even if there are one or two very good men around you, you may have a brother, a cousin, uh, somebody, you know, a colleague in office, somebody like that, who is a very nice man. But when you start putting these sort of labels, see, it doesn't make a difference to the uh, egoistic guy who is trying to hurt you or trying to hurt others. They will continue in what they want. 
but your relationship with the good men will get uh, uh, spoiled. So whenever I typecast people, be it by gender, be it by caste, be it by profession, I am creating a wall and I am making myself more lonely and isolated from society. I am asking you only to insulate yourself from the person who is being manipulative and who has converted this relationship into a toxic relationship. So I will ask how can we help our counselees deal with judgmental and very observant close people in their uh, uh, life. I told you the first thing was to tell them build up that self-esteem or that confidence level in the counselee to, to say you can do it but use these techniques use I words be assertive look for the right occasions have a gramophone record type of thing where every now and then you bring it up. When you feel that you have put in enough efforts and nothing is happening then you move into whatever I have been telling you, try to insulate and to strengthen that insulation part of the um, thing. What you need to do is to give yourself positive uh, affirmations. You know, the other person is putting you down. You put yourself up. That's another point I want you to keep in mind. Mandela says everything I go to my father's place, my stepmother ill treats me. I always feel hurt. Now I have decided to comfort of this relationship, though it is tough. How can I achieve uh, this? Yes, you are a grown up person. For whatever reason, your father selected this lady and got married to um, her. Whatever may be their relationship, may be good or bad. Your father remains your father. So do not cut him off because of the stepmother. If he is good to you or if you feel some sort of affinity to him or even a duty to him, so that your conscience is clear that I am not ignoring my father in his old age. So you give whatever best you can to your father. But again, the same thing, try to insulate yourself from your stepmother as much as possible. If you can possibly, you, you have to explore and find out if you can you know, interact with your father away from the stepmother. You say, you come to my place, stay here with uh, me or let us meet in a neutral place. Those are the type of uh, efforts that you have to keep making. Only if your father is so committed to his wife that he also turns against you and says, you are bad, you are not being nice to your stepmother, then it becomes very difficult. But even that can be dealt uh, with. Nishan Thomas says when kids are involved, the decision making gets tougher for most women. Absolutely. You have to understand uh, that. But again, I come to the point. See, uh, in India, there isn't sufficient research on this so far. But in the Western countries, behavioral scientists are fairly clear. They say that it is better for a child to be brought up by one loving, caring, peaceful, and relaxed parent rather than being brought up by two abusive, fighting, violent uh, parents. So here again, a call has to be taken. It's a major decision of life. Has, have things got so bad that I need to take my child or my children away from the toxic influence of the other uh, parent? These are all individual things. Like uh, Seema told you a little while back, we are available to help you to explore at an individual level. And as she mentioned, it's a free counseling. Any one of you at any time, if those of you who don't want to come or who are not in Bangalore, Call us up, send us an email. We'll start the process of analyzing at the individual uh, level. We do not turn away anybody. We are not too busy to handle. We don't take up too many people. We are not a commercial organization. So inevitably, we do have the time, effort, and inclination to respond to anybody who comes to us. And since we are a fairly large team, we can al always manage within us. So if one of us is tied down or busy, the other person takes over like that. Uh, we uh, go about it. OK, this is a good question from Surekha. What are the specific ways to cultivate emotional insulation? Start off by getting up in the morning and checking out what is the interaction that you are going to be having today with this toxic uh, relationship. Starting with the first level. So can I first bring down my stress levels? Can I be more at peace? For that, you know that there are innumerable ways, whichever one uh, suits you. It could be meditation. It could be compassionate mindfulness. It could be yoga. It could be 
prayer, it could be whatever comes to you naturally. But first thing is, you start off the day by you know, reducing your stress levels. Secondly, anticipate what are the triggers. Over meal time, this person starts off something. Or when something goes wrong or when a third person comes in, that is the time when this person does uh, something. So at that point, be very careful. If you can physically avoid that confrontation or that interaction, ideal. Avoid those type of situations. When a third person is there, that is when this person suddenly starts becoming a little louder and abusive. So when that third person comes in, I'm going to give some excuse and move away from uh, that. Then, when I have to face the person, I can't physically run away from that person and that person is being abusive at that time. The one thing to do is neither to break down and cry and feel miserable about what is happening to you, nor get into a confrontationist sort of situation. That is what the skill called assertiveness is all about. I've been talking about it many times. We also have a booklet on assertiveness, a little workbook, which you can order from office, either the hard copy or soft copy, whatever you uh, want. Keep that and do the exercises in this. Just as a quick uh, uh, thing, let me tell you that assertiveness means, let's say when the person is starting to talk, focus on my own uh, self. Focus on my emotions. I am being provoked. I will probably lose my temper. Or it is likely that I will break down and uh, cry, become aware of uh, my own emotions. Then how am I reacting to this person? If I say one nasty word, he is going to start tearing me apart. If I break down and start uh, 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 crying, the other person will accuse me of that. I told you know, how people say, if it were not for you. Whenever I'm trying to carry out a conversation and help something, you break down and start crying. Look at you. How do you expect me to do? So even this person who is shouting, being violent, turns it on the other person and says, you are crying. That's why this thing is not getting resolved. So to see whether you can control, you go and cry afterwards as much as you want with some sympathetic or understanding person. But at that moment, build up that inner resilience to say, in front of this person, I will not cry. I will not cringe. I will not start off by saying, sorry, sorry, it's my fault when you know it is not your uh, fault. Straight, simple eye contact. Practice that. It's not very difficult. Tell somebody to help you by playing the role of that abusive person. So you have this role play and the other person is going on you know, shouting, screaming, accusing. What you need to do is to check how you are standing or sitting. It should be in a very perfect, relaxed and straight posture. How do I make eye contact with the uh, person? What sort of expression do I have on my uh, face? How does my expression change when he is trying to provoke me? Can I maintain the same neutral expression? He is trying to bring out some reaction from me, but I'm not going to react to him. I'm going to hold my uh, uh, ground. I'm giving you only some of the very basic, simple things. As I said, there are many more, but if you can learn this uh, uh, thing of assertiveness. Another point I wanted to um, emphasize on this um, thing is sometimes we get very badly pulled down and sucked into a toxic relationship and give us ourselves that victim role if we start comparing with others. How often I have seen somebody who is suffering from this sort of a situation and while explaining about his or her situation and the bad times that he or she is going through, at some point the person turns around and says, except me, everybody in the world seems to be happy. Why did it have to happen to me only? All my relatives, my cousins are happy. All the other men or women of my age and my background, they are all happy. 
I am the only one who is suffering. The moment you take on that victim role and you ask this question, why me? You will never get an answer. It is a lottery. If you win a lottery and you get one crore of rupees, do you turn around and say, why me? There were lakhs and lakhs of people who bought lottery tickets. Why me? It was a lottery, literally, isn't it? Exactly the same thing happens. So firstly, there is no question of why me. It had to happen. I was walking happily on the uh, road and a car came and struck me and I had an accident. Why me? There are tens of thousands of people who walk on the uh, roads and footpaths. They don't get hit by uh, vehicles. Why did I get hit by this vehicle? It was an accident. It just happened. So I need to go above, rise above that thing of why me. If you find yourself comparing yourself, saying, see, other people are so happy. Other people have this, this, this. And we even go to the extent of specific relationships. If I am having a toxic relationship with my spouse, I start comparing and saying, see, all the other people are so happy. Their spouses treat them so well. It is not true. That is another thing which I want you to understand. Superficially, there will be so many people who seem to be literally enjoying and having a happy life. <laughs> you will be amazed. If you check quietly that among the people who seem to be happy or who seem to be, you know, well treated by their spouse, give me names. A lot of people will include your name in it. Because you have not gone to them and given them the innermost and the dirtiest secrets and all that, isn't it? In fact, as I told you many a time, we even protect the abuser. And when that happens, People think that you are one of the happy people. They are jealous of you. And if they are having certain problems in a similar issue, they compare themselves and say, why me? And they look at uh, you thinking that you are happy. Regardless of that, it is not important how many people are happy, how many people are unhappy. Relationships are not to do with statistics. It is like if I tell you that you know, my best friend died and I'm feeling miserable. You know, this death has really shocked me. And somebody turns around and tells me that, uh, do you know in Afghanistan, 10,000 people died? How does it matter to me? It's not a game of numbers. It's not that if 10,000 people die, you're supposed to feel more uh, sad. And if 1,000 dies, you're supposed to feel less sad. I have to focus on my feelings and how I am dealing with that one death. In this, it is also a question of how I am managing my own life and my emotions. Yes, Benman says treating well by spouse is not always the sign of a good relationship. No, I never said that, Benman. I only said that people seem to think that way. People say other people are happy, their spouses are treating them well. Why I am having a bad relationship? I am talking about the comparison uh, factor. Yes, I agree that being treated well by a spouse is not always a sign of a good a relationship, particularly close relationship like spouse, child, parent. They are multifaceted. There are so many factors involved in uh, that we have to deal with each of these uh, uh, things. Nirpama uh, rightly says that many of us are related to this topic. That is the reason why I said that please give a serious thought. I'm not saying that I am the ultimate guru or the answer to every problem of uh, uh, yours. Nothing of that sort. I am also reflecting back to you what I have been learning or you know coming to know from people like you. And I am acting as a mirror reflecting it back to you. And I also mentioned to you, prevention is better than uh, um, uh, cure. Exactly, Sureka says, if someone desires you, it does not mean that they respect uh, you. This is what I uh, told you about, let's say, uh, the new boy and girl relationship. Somebody has fallen in love. I desire this person. I love this person. I'll do anything. I'll give my life to you. But why were you talking to that boy? I saw you standing there and laughing with that boy. Is this how you treat a person whom you love and with whom you have so much regard for? That means you're not respecting the other person. 
that's why i always say that communication is the first you know pillar of a good relationship respect is the second trust is the third and commitment is the fourth there is no love without respect or even if there is it will fly out of the window in no time i would any day have a person respecting me rather than loving me if i had a choice i would say please and when i say respect i'm not talking about that how we use colloquially respecting your elders or respecting this person's position or knowledge no just respecting that this person is having a mind of his own he has certain good and bad qualities he is a person worth interacting with and a person worth connecting with that's all i'm talking about when i mention uh, you know respect sonia says have good communication and better understanding is a sign of good relationship in all relation exactly that's why i said communication is the first of the four pillars that i talk about in close uh, relationship it starts with communication goes on to respect goes on to trust and goes on to commitment and love keeps coming going coming going out of the window sometimes you madly love a person sometimes you hate that same uh, person nothing happens vinita says i think lots of insecurities and unrealistic assumptions also lead to toxic relationships exactly that is one thing which i told you and i'm glad vinita brought it up so i would like to reiterate that uh, uh, to you that if i have this unrealistic assumptions if i have some insecurities in me there is a fair chance that i will land up in a toxic relationship abel mujhe mar i'm giving an invitation people look at my face they see my demeanor and say this person is vulnerable the same way as in a crowded place a pickpocket knows who is the easiest person to pick his pocket who would be having lot of money in his purse and how easy is it then he picks that person and goes no the same thing happens in relationships people look out for vulnerable people whom they can make into uh, 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 victims nishan says respect and communication over love any time any day yes i'm not belittling love i'm not trying to say that love is not great or something i'm just saying that love is an emotion which keeps going up and down up and down and accept it nothing wrong with it there's no such thing as uh, you know loving 24 by 7 into whatever the number of years and all that it doesn't happen that way except it yes there are times that i'm madly in love with this person there are times that i hate this person or there are times that i'm indifferent to that person but what is more prominent is the uh, uh, you know communication respect all these things that i am uh, talking about pranati says accept the person as uh, he she is yes and there's a difference between acceptance and tolerance remember that tolerating the person as he she is is not enough only when you accept the person with the differences good points bad points i have to take it or leave it it comes as a package deal i cannot have a perfect relationship with anybody in this whole uh, uh, world shoba says definitely literally i was in this state but when i came to contact with banjara now i understand what i am wanting and thinking nothing bothers about others hearty congratulations shoba i am happy that banjara has played that uh, role because when we get such genuine feedback from any one of you it really gives us a boost i am not uh, trying to boast us on anything that's why we don't come out with this but when somebody genuinely without our asking for it gives this sort of compliment i am very happy but at the same time i would like to tell shobha it was your effort if you have managed to come out we may have acted as a conduit we may have been helpful but it was your effort that uh, made it so let me respond to the last point before we end up shila says parents want to control son even after his marriage and want him to listen to him stay with him even after he is 50 years old this middle some nature impacts marriage my the only thing i would tell shila is again don't take caste there are parents who really want autonomy for their child and give them the freedom there are parents like you mentioned who want to control the child even when he's halfway through his life and he's having a family of his own what i am concerned about is focus on the individual and what is the best that we can do uh, about it and this last point that chila brought up gave me a very good uh, you know insight into what i am going to be talking about next week i am going to be talking about why is it 
that we want appreciation praise or admiration only from specific one or two people there are so many people around us who are appreciating us praising us giving positive strokes but i go running behind that one person or two people and i say i want to have a good relationship with uh, everybody uh, with this individual i want to be praised i want to be acknowledged and appreciated why does that happen i want you people to think over it during this week we are going to meet next saturday again at 11 o'clock and we will discuss why that happens and so many other things as the weeks go past have a wonderful time looking forward again to uh, seeing you next week now even the festive season has started let us celebrate let us move towards a better quality of life and let us hope that this horrible monster of third wave you know uh, goes off as a wave and the wave recedes and we can move on to better and more happier and contented life see you again bye bye jai hind